Hi everyone, this is Brandon Burgess with Irrigator Tech. And um, we're in the field right now. We're gonna be testing this backflow, so we wanted to show you guys in the field how to test and the procedures, things that you're gonna see when you come up to test the backflow. So I'm here, I've got my notebook. I'm gonna need to record the values. I like to record it on just a blank piece of paper, go back, there's a form that comes with this and I'll use the data that I have to fill the form. I, whenever I bring paper out in the field, it always gets wet, so for me this helps out. So I got my gauge, we got our backflow here, we got the cage, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. First thing we do is notify, identify, inspect, and observe. So I already came, I notified the, um, the property management company that I'm gonna be here. Um, so let's identify this. So we can see this is a Febco, the cage off. Let's go ahead and identify. So here, this is a Febco, 825Y. Serial number. Sometimes it gets a little corroded. You want to get it get rubbing. So J0026. Nine two. Okay, and then record the size. So this is an inch and a half. I'll write that down. And then we need to make sure that we know what this device is. So this is the RP, reduced pressure principle. So I'll write that down, RP. Okay, so then, we, I, we notified, we I just identified, so we inspect. We wanna make sure that no one has changed anything with the backflow. No one's connected anything different to any of these test cocks. I'm gonna go ahead and t remove the caps. So they look pretty good. And then inspect, so we want to look around, see if there's any discharge, anything like that. We just have some cobwebs, just fine. So it looks good, so we're ready to start our test. Okay, so now I brought my gauge right here. So a couple tools you'll need, channel locks are good. Um, we need a screwdriver, I like to have a multi-tool handy. I need my fittings, so these are my fittings, so this changes it to where I can hook my gauge up to it. So I need my differential pressure gauge. Right here. So this is what I'm going to use to test the backflow. So it's going to show me what, how much pressure I'm holding back on my check valve, and I'll explain that. And then I need my hoses. I need my red high side hose, my green low side hose, and my black bypass hose. Okay. Let me go ahead and set this down. So, first thing I need to do is bleed the test cocks. So these are the test cocks. We got one, two, three, and four. And what these are used for, this is only used for testing, right? So there's no other purpose but for hooking my gauge up to it and making it work. So I need to bleed them. So what, why we bleed these, they just knock out any foreign material and then we wanna make sure they're working, right? And so on the RP, the reduced pressure, we have to do it in a certain order. So since this plays on a difference in pressure, we always wanna make sure our inlet pressure is higher than our outlet pressure, right? So to make sure that we maintain that, I gotta bleed these, but I gotta bleed them in this order. I gotta do four first, leave it running to keep that pressure lower. This is where it can get a little messy on the Febco because it's gonna be coming straight at us. So I got three on. Got four on. Now one I'm just gonna turn on and then turn off. Now I'm gonna be coming back 
bad with. Okay, so now I'm going to install my appropriate fittings. And again, these change it so where I can use my gate. So you can see I only connected it to the number four, the number three, and the number two. So the number one we don't connect to unless we have issues. So if we run into that, we'll be hooking up here. Okay. So it's, now it's time to test. We take my differential pressure gauge. I'm going to hook up my red, which is my high side, to the gauge. into the number two test cock. So red indicates higher pressure. Right. As you can see that I hooked the red to the red on the gauge. The green, or the low side, connects to the gauge. We hook this up to the number three test cock. So this is the lower pressure side. I'm going to go ahead and open the number three test cock. Now, whenever I open or when I connect the hose, I need to bleed the air out. So I'm going to open the bleed, which is on the top part of my gauge. So you can see a nice steady stream. Now I'm going to open the number two, which is my high side. Turning it on the top part of my gauge. So these are both open. As you can see, the water is flowing out. So I'm just trying to purge all the air out. See, there's another little kick of air. You want to let this go until you're confident that there's a nice steady stream, no air. So we're looking pretty good right now. So, while this both are open and where water's coming out, we want to close the number two shutoff valve. And why we want to do that is we want to stop and make sure that we can test without any demand going down and messing up our values. So with that being done, you turn the red first and turn the green off. All right, so we have it all closed. You can see here. This is telling me what my PSI difference is between my high side and my low side. So it's a difference in pressure of about nine. So that's a good value. We're looking for five PSI or greater. So I'm gonna go to my notes. It got wet already. So I go to my notes. And so this is my apparent pressure uh, drop across my number one check valve. So let's make a note of that. APP 9 PSI. Okay. So now I'm ready to test. So my first test that I perform is my relief valve opening point. So this is my relief valve. And so this plays off pressure as well. So the relief valve needs to open up when my pressure from my inlet and my um, outlet come within two psi. So, to sim to increase the pressure through my low side hose, I'm going to open my control valve on the bottom here one full turn. By doing that, I'm pressurizing the bar. Right. So I'm taking that high side pressure, and I'm going to just do a quarter turn here on my low side. Putting my hand down, seeing when I feel water coming out. Okay. 
Okay. So that opened it at about 2.4, right? Needs to be above 2, so that's a passing value. So we can go ahead and move on to the next test. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my notes, record that my opening point for my relief valve was at 2.3 psi. So my next test is going to be my number two check valve. So to perform that, I take my bypass hose, which is my black hose, to the black knob here. Now you notice on the top I don't have a bleed, so I can't actually bleed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this here, just so some water comes out. Go ahead and close that and hook that up to the number four test cock. that closed. We're, I'm going to go ahead and open the number four test cock. Okay, so the first value that we got was what I call the apparent pressure. So I'm not at that right now. I'm much lower. So what I want to do is reset my value by bleeding the low side, turning the green. See how my gauge goes up to 15. Go ahead and close sets me back at the 9 psi. Now what I'm going to do is open this bypass. So by doing that, I'm taking my high side pressure. Remember that this is my red control valve is still one full turn. And I'm going to do a full turn here. Now I want to watch my gauge and I want to make sure that it's holding. So see how it's holding steady like that? That means that even though I put the high side pressure from my red hose to the black area behind the check valve, it's not letting that water pass through. So that's a passing value. Okay, now for the final check, I'm going to go ahead and reset my check valve one more time. So by doing that, we bleed the low side. Close it. And then I observe the value. So I look here, I'm still at 9 PSI. So that's my actual differential pressure drop across my check valve. So meaning this number one check valve is holding back 9 PSI, right? We need a minimum of five, so we have a nice strong number one check valve. This backflow passed. And now all I have to do is remove my equipment, return watt service, and then I'm gonna go ahead and create the, or write down those values.